Hey guys, AJ is here. I appreciate your wonderful support. If you enjoy my content, please consider showing your appreciation by liking and subscribing to my channel. Thank you. You are Sebastian? As soon as Sebastian appeared, the sharp eyes of the black-robed old man fixed on Sebastian closely. Sebastian took out eight elixirs and handed them to his father Brian and the seven elders respectively. Father, have these healing elixirs and share them with the elders as well. What? That is a fourth grade healing panacea! The black robed old man exclaimed in surprise as he inadvertently glanced at the eight spirit pills that Sebastian took out. And his eyes could no longer leave the eight spirit pills. Then he trembled with excitement. In the Heavenly Sky Empire, only the four major sects in the Imperial family had access to the fourth grade panacea. This kid actually took out eight. This kid is exceptional. Not only the seventh heaven flower, but he also has eight fourth rank elixirs. This time I came to Blazing Star City at the right time. Immediately the eyes of the black-robed old man shone, and greed was all over his face. Sebastian, these elixirs seem to be very precious. Brian Hughes took the panacea that Sebastian handed him, hesitating a bit. Although he couldn't recognize that it was a fourth grade panacea, his intuition told him that this panacea was not simple. Sebastian! The seven elders were also a little hesitant. Not long ago, Sebastian had given each of them a bottle of elixir, which made them break through successfully, and now each of them had been given a bottle of elixir for healing. This panacea must be extremely expensive. Father, respected elders, please have it quickly. Healing is important. Sebastian insisted they had the pills. The fourth grade panacea was nothing very special to Sebastian. With the improvement of strength, he could now easily refine the fourth grade elixir. He even believed that after a while, with further practice, he might be able to refine the fifth grade elixir. He felt confident of his abilities to refine pills now, and it was not an easy thing to achieve. It meant that Sebastian's level of alchemy had reached the highest peak in the whole world. Stop! Do not take those eight panaceas! Sebastian, bring me those eight elixirs immediately and hand over the seventh heaven flower too! Perhaps I can consider letting your Hughes family go. Otherwise, if I order now, the Hughes family will be finished in a moment's time. Seeing Patriarch Hughes and the seven elders holding up the elixir and preparing to take it, the black-robed old man couldn't help being anxious and roared. The members of the Hughes family have already taken the injured Brian Hughes and the seven elders inside. Even if he wanted to rush over to snatch the elixir, it would not be possible for him. Sebastian turned around slowly, looking indifferently at the old man in the black robe as he said, Old man, do you think if you ask me to give it, I will give it? Sebastian, do you know who is standing in front of you? This is the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts Mercenary Group. Do you think you stand a chance in front of the leader? Christopher laughed out loud. Go ahead. Grab those eight spirit pills from them, and even if they swallow them, cut open their stomachs to take them out. Do that. The old man in the black robe completely lost his patience and gave an order. Immediately, the nine black-clothed middle-aged men who were standing behind the black-robed old man all rushed out, their spiritual power erupting. All of them were late-stage masters. The strength of the ruthless ghost mercenary group was terrifying. All the people present there trembled in fear. Those who dare to offend the Hughes family will die. Sebastian roared and rushed out. He first cast the heaven-destroying needle technique. The nine black-clothed middle-aged men who were rushing towards them suddenly stopped, screamed, and swayed as if they were drunk. With the soaring soul power, the heaven-destroying needle that Sebastian used had caused serious damage to warriors in the late stage. Sebastian drew his long sword out of its sheath and struck forward. Immediately the sword energy flashed out like hundreds and thousands of swords coming out together, and the ethereal sword light blazed throughout the surrounding area, transforming the air into clouds and mist. The people around could only see the dazzling light of the sword, but they couldn't see Sebastian's sword at all. Only nine crisp voices could be heard at the same time. Then, the sword that had glowed all over the sky disappeared. Sebastian stood on the spot with a long sword in his hand, and blood dripped continuously from the tip of the sword. This set of heavenly sword with myriad changes is indeed a very powerful set of swordsmanship compared to my earlier level of strength. Sebastian showed a satisfied expression. During the last two days, Sebastian had practiced three martial arts apart from alchemy. The heavenly sword technique had been one of them, and it had helped him to defeat these men. 
Those nine middle-aged men in black were clutching their bloody throats tightly with their hands, staring at Sebastian with horrified eyes. They were trying to say something, but they couldn't. Their throats were all cut by Sebastian. Then with a loud thumping noise, all the bodies of nine middle-aged men in black fell to the ground one after another, becoming nine corpses. With one move, Sebastian had killed nine late-stage masters. At this moment, everyone present there was completely awed and terrified. A profound shock engulfed everyone, leaving them speechless and fixated on Sebastian. The atmosphere turned peculiar as an eerie silence prevailed, and no one dared to utter a word. One had known that late-stage masters were already the most powerful existence in Blazing Star City, but now in front of Sebastian, they were as weak as an ant. Why do I feel that Sebastian is much more powerful than Justin, who possesses the heavenly spirit body? Finally, a whisper rose amongst the crowd of onlookers in the distance. Damn it! How could this loser be so strong? Christopher and the patriarchs of the Long and Lincoln family along with the city lord of Blazing Star City, all lost their hope, and their faces were pale and drained of all color. The combat power displayed by Sebastian had completely shocked them. Our Hughes family is saved. Sebastian, you are really powerful. Everyone in the Hughes family was very excited. Patriarch, let's quickly take the healing elixir, and then help Sebastian kill the enemy, the elders said excitedly. Then, without any hesitation, Brian Hughes and the seven elders stuffed the elixir in their hands into their mouths, and the majestic medicinal power spread rapidly through their bodies with a booming sound. Their wounds healed at an astonishing speed. Their wounds healed. Their spiritual energy recovered, and their breath improved. Brian Hughes and the seven elders stood up straight at the same time, feeling that their bodies were full of energy. They were all ready for battle. Boy, I admit I underestimated you. However, you are still not enough to be my opponent. The eyes of the black-robed old man were fixed on Sebastian, and his murderous intent was extremely intense. Those nine middle-aged men in black who were his confidants and had spent a lot of time and energy cultivating, had all been killed by Sebastian. Today, at the Hughes Mansion, everyone will die. You can do nothing to help them, I can assure you. The tone of the black-robed old man was extremely cold. A large number of men in black rushed up from all directions to aid him. They were all killers of the ruthless ghost mercenary group. My son, be careful. This old guy is a master of heaven, Brian whispered to Sebastian. Patriarch Hughes and the seven elders had positioned themselves on either side of Sebastian. By then, it was evident that the entire Hughes family had embraced Sebastian as their new leader. Sebastian raised the long sword in his hand that was dripping blood constantly, pointed it forward obliquely and said out aloud, Father, we won't let anyone escape today. Each and everyone who had come to destroy the Hughes clan will be wiped out today. Patriarch Hughes and the seven elders agreed with him by nodding their heads. The cards had turned suddenly. They had never expected that such a twist awaited them. While at the beginning it looked like everyone from the Hughes family would die today, it was now a very different picture. Sebastian had given them the courage and hope to dream that they could defeat their enemies and survive. So all the members of the Hughes clan fought fervently and very spiritedly. Kill the enemy! Sebastian raised his long sword high and let out a loud roar. All the members of the Hughes family raised their weapons, followed Sebastian with determined eyes, and roared at the same time. The echoes of their cries reverberated throughout the surrounding area. Will Sebastian be able to forge a path to triumph, leading his clan to victory? As the city lord and the three formidable families joined hands with the leader of the ruthless ghost mercenary group, will Sebastian's power be enough to defeat them? In front of the gate of Hugh's mansion, the war finally broke out. Under the leadership of Patriarch Hughes and the Seven Elders, the members of the Hughes family rushed out one by one. Kill! Kill all the members of the Hughes family! Christopher roared. The three major families, the City Lord's mansion, and the men and horses of the ruthless ghost mercenary group charged forward at the same time. The two sides fought together. In contrast, the Hughes family had few horses. However, there were eight late-stage masters who had taken the lead in charging full of momentum. Christopher Robert, be ready to die. With one glance, Brian Hughes fixed his eyes on his deadly enemy, Christopher Robert, and strode towards him. Patriarch, I will help you kill Christopher Robert. 
one of the elders followed Brian Hughes and attacked Christopher Robert. City Lord, be ready to die. Two of the other elders went after the City Lord. The other four elders of the Hughes family led the members of the Hughes family towards the enemy camp. There was a huge noise caused by the roar of spiritual power, the sound of clashing weapons, the sound of killing, and the sound of screams which could be heard endlessly. Old man, be ready to die. Sebastian stretched out his heavenly magic steps, shaped like a ghost, and rushed towards the leader of the ruthless ghost's mercenary group, who was dressed in black. I'm going to kill you first and then destroy the Hughes family. The black-robed old man snorted coldly. With a loud noise, a terrifying pressure of spiritual power, like a stormy sea, was released from his body. A palm print made of condensed spiritual power blasted towards Sebastian in the air. Halfway through this terrifying palm print, a ghostly face appeared in the center of the palm print, making a piercing and strange laugh, disturbing people's minds. Sebastian, do you know how powerful and terrifying this wind of the evil palm technique is? It is an honor for you to die under the effect of this palm technique. The black-robed old man laughed wildly. Immature tricks, Sebastian sneered. Without paying much attention to his threat, he clenched his right fist and punched out violently. With a booming noise, a huge amount of physical strength poured out, and the air in front of the fist was suddenly sucked dry, forming a short vacuum. The fist moved extremely fast, and with another ear-piercing booming noise, both the fists and palms collided together. The noise that followed was deafening. The palm print that the black-robed old man punched over was blown to pieces on the spot. Sebastian was taken aback, as he stumbled backward as his arms throbbed with an unbearable pain. It seems that with my physical strength, I can barely fight against warriors in the early stages of the Heaven Realm. If he would have higher cultivation powers, I don't know what I would have done. In Sebastian's heart, he had an accurate understanding of his physical strength. Your physical strength is really powerful. The old man in the black robe was extremely shocked. Stop talking nonsense and die! Sebastian charged forward with a long sword in his hand. But boy, do you think I'm afraid of you? From the sleeve of the black robed old man, a black scimitar slipped down, like a black crescent moon, emitting a cold light and slashed towards Sebastian's throat at a strange angle. With a swishing noise, the long sword in Sebastian's hand struck out, and immediately, thousands of dazzling sword glow transformed into sword flowers flying towards the black-robed old man. Once the heavenly sword was used, it could transform into endless sword light, and it was difficult to distinguish the true from the false, making the enemy dazzled. Within an instant, the swords of the two sides collided countless times. The crisp metal impact sounded like setting off a string of firecrackers. Sebastian discovered that the black-robed old man's saber technique was surprisingly good, able to block his own quick attack. How can it be? As the leader of the mercenary group fought with Sebastian, he couldn't help being shocked and angry. He discovered that Sebastian's combat power was not inferior to his. However, he was a master of the heavenly realm, while Sebastian was still in the middle stage of the situation. This scene, in the eyes of those onlookers in the distance, was extremely shocking. Look, Sebastian and the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts mercenary group were fighting incessantly. Oh my god, is Sebastian going against the sky? That mercenary group leader is after all a master of heaven. Shock discussions continued to ring out from amongst the crowd. Everyone was immersed in extreme shock. My son is so powerful. He can even fight the Master of Heaven. Even Brian Hughes was too shocked to believe it. God bless, my Hughes family is such a warrior. It seems that our Hughes family will not only be able to defeat all its enemies, but also have some hopes to rise. The seven elders of the Hughes family burst into tears with excitement. Sebastian is mighty and invincible. The other members of the Hughes family also roared loudly. At this moment, the morale of the Hughes family was greatly boosted. Kill. Encouraged by Sebastian, the members of the Hughes family looked down on death one by one, desperately killing the enemy. Old man, now it is your turn to die. Amidst the roar of the Hughes family members, Sebastian stepped forward and struck out the long sword in his hand again. Boy, do you believe you can end my life so easily just because you desire to do so? The leader of the ruthless ghosts was furious and greeted him with a knife. There was a clamoring noise and both sides fought fast, and in a short while dozens of moves were made. Heavenly Realm Masters are nothing more than that, Sebastian laughed. Laughing loudly, he cast the heaven-destroying needle technique, and the needle broke into the sea of consciousness, 
of the black-robed old man. The black-robed old man let out an exclamation and felt that the pain in his head was unbearable and couldn't help but retreat several steps. This is the mystic art of the soul. How can it be? How does Sebastian know of this? The old man showed a shocked expression. Despite being in the heavenly realm, even I lack the capability to master the enigmatic art of the soul. Then how could Sebastian display the secret art of the soul being in the middle stage of the realm? This is simply shocking. The old man thought to himself in a shocked manner. Sebastian took this opportunity and punched him. The terrifying physical strength caused the black-robed old man's whole body to fly up. Now is the time for you to die! The old man was startled and angry, and he slapped forward with his palm with the terrifying wind of the evil palm. This was his special trick. Both their fists and palm collided with a terrifying sound. The old man in black took a few steps back. Another heaven-destroying needle pierced into the head of the black-robed old man, causing severe pain in his head again. Sebastian's fist hit again. Next, Sebastian used more than a dozen heaven-destroying needles in succession, blasting out more than a dozen punches. Every punch shocked the old man back a few steps. Sebastian pressed forward every step of the way, gaining the upper hand. The leader kept retreating, losing his chance. His eyes were tearing apart, and he roared again and again to challenge Sebastian. However, the power of the god-eating needle was so powerful that his head was in severe pain, distracting more than half of his attention. The old man finally looked up to the sky and roared like a madman. From the corner of his mouth, blood continued to ooze. Old man, go to hell. With a loud roar, Sebastian threw out the fifteenth punch. The black-robed old man was so shocked that he flew upside down, hit the ground with his back, and the fall created a huge dent in the ground on the spot. Boy, if I don't kill you today, I, Raymond Brooke, will give up my position as the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts mercenary group. The black-robed old man got up. His face was covered in blood, and he roared fiercely. His face was ferocious like a ghost. It turned out that the black-robed old man's name was Raymond Brooke. He suddenly took out a black panacea and stuffed it into his mouth, and the next moment a huge roaring noise emanated from his body. The strength of the spiritual power released from his body increased rapidly and was visible to the naked eye. He had reached the midday realm, which was at the advanced stage of the heaven realm. Soon, the spiritual power fluctuations released by him reached the level of the late stage of the heaven realm. Sebastian was stunned. He did not expect the man to advance to the heaven realm at once. Sebastian felt helpless. Can Sebastian defy the might of Raymond Brook, who wields the power of the heavenly realm in its late stage? Will Sebastian succumb to defeat, dooming the Hughes clan to oblivion? Will a savior emerge from the shadows, extending a helping hand? Or will Sebastian be left with no choice but to surrender, which would mean death for him? The overwhelming energy emanating from the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts, Raymond intimidated and compelled those around him to retreat. Within a 10 meter radius, a visible torrent of potent aura surged like boiling water, roaring with intensity. Within a hundred meters, sand and rocks were lifted into the air, while the wind unleashed a ferocious howling noise. Sebastian, now let me see how you fight me. The leader of the ruthless ghosts raised his head, his eyes showed a hysterical killing intent, and he smiled coldly. His voice became hoarse, and he looked very daunting. Suddenly he made the evil palm movement and a force of exceptional power turned towards Sebastian. The power of the evil palm was at least dozens of times stronger than before. Sebastian greeted him with a punch. The overwhelming force of the evil palm sent Sebastian flying dozens of meters away before hitting the ground. Even Sebastian looked a bit shaken as he recognized that the black panacea that Raymond had taken was called the violence pill. It was a kind of evil elixir specially designed to squeeze the potential and temporarily increase the combat power. My dear son, Patriarch Hughes cried out in fear. Everyone from the Hughes family was shocked. So tell me, how do you feel now? But I must admit that you are indeed a rare young genius who could fight me till this point. However, you were too easy to defeat. There is no shortage of geniuses in this world, but what is really lacking in them is the urge to learn. But unfortunately, Sebastian, you will never get a chance to learn. Today, you will die, and the Hughes family will be destroyed. The leader of the ghosts, Raymond Brooke laughed wildly, and the sound echoed for miles around them. 
Sebastian will not be able to escape this time. All the people around him secretly started thinking. Sebastian, now you know how powerful the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts is. The patriarchs from the three major families along with the city lord, joined in to jeer and mock Sebastian. Till then, Sebastian put up a relentless fight with Raymond, which had put them under great pressure. Because if Sebastian won, it meant that the three major families and the city lord's mansion would be in big trouble. Now, seeing that Raymond had the upper hand, they couldn't help but feel relieved. Suddenly Sebastian got up from the ground, the corner of his mouth was stained with blood, but his face was full of sneer, with a trace of disdain. A pill can only allow you to elevate a mere two realms, but there is nothing worth showing off. He knew that it was next to impossible to beat the leader, but he was reminded of a precious technique he had learned as the Heavenly Emperor. It was a secret technique, which Sebastian had learned from the Blood Clan, a very powerful race. Now, he decided to use that technique, which was quite dangerous to use with his current physical state. However, if he refrained from using this technique, he would inevitably die at the hands of Raymond. The pungent smell of blood filled every inch of space, and was accompanied by a monstrous fierceness. It was the blood and source essence corroding strike technique. The very next moment, from every pore of Sebastian's whole body, a blood-red strange gas started to spew out. It was Sebastian's original essence and blood, which was extracted by a special method. In an instant, his inner spiritual energy and blood became frighteningly strong, and the surrounding area was completely covered by the blood mist that was too thick to even see through. Even though you have taken the violence pill, I can kill you, Sebastian roared. Now let's see which is superior, your pill or my secret technique. Sebastian looked at the man and smiled strangely. His whole body was covered with a layer of thick, blood-red mist, and his evil aura was soaring to the sky, extremely terrifying. Raymond tipped his toes, and like a big bird he volleyed towards Sebastian, looking vicious, and pushed out his right palm horizontally. From all directions, an evil wind started to blow, and the screaming of evil spirits could be heard. His palm unexpectedly produced a kind of cold black flame, which spewed out with the force of the palm, threatening to burn everything. It was the raging fire technique where the black flame passed. Even the air was burned. Sebastian clenched his fist and blasted out. The blood-red fist print continued to enlarge, forming a monstrous blood-red hurricane. With an enormous banging noise, the air started to explode from the blows of the punches. Then the fist and the palm collided on both sides, and there was a stalemate for about a second. Then with an explosion, Raymond's whole body was blown to pieces in an instant, flying all over the sky, and his bones exploded like firecrackers. Sebastian's punch had shattered all the bones and meridians in the man's body. The body fell to the ground. Everyone present there gasped, and was in extreme shock to see Sebastian punching a heavenly master to death so easily. The great method of disintegrating the source essence and blood strike was a very rare method of combat inherited by the Blood Clan and passed down only to its descendants. How could a mere violence pill compete with it? Raymond, who had taken the violence pill, was unable to put up resistance and finally succumb to its power. Our leader is dead. Now we have no other way but to withdraw. When Raymond fell, those members of the Ruthless Ghost's mercenary group were so frightened that they fled in all directions. We will also withdraw. The patriarchs of the three major families and the city lord were all terrified, and with a loud roar, they turned and fled. Seeing Raymond being beaten to death, they realized that they could not beat Sebastian even if they stayed and chose to fight him. Let's kill them. Sebastian gave out a loud roar and like a shooting star chased Patriarch Robert. Sebastian was covered in a blood-red thick fog, and the long sword in his hand pierced out like lightning. Thousands of dazzling sword lights shot up into the sky, trying to behead Christopher within a few moments. Sebastian, spare me! Patriarch Robert realized that he was being chased by Sebastian and begged for mercy. However, it was because of Christopher Robert that the Hughes family had been suppressed and targeted everywhere. How could Sebastian be willing to let him go? The next moment, Christopher was shrouded in dazzling sword lights, and he screamed loudly in pain. The sword light all over the sky had disappeared. There were injuries all over his body which bled continuously. The meridians on his hand tendons, hamstrings, and all other meridians had been severed. He became a completely invalid and useless person, unable to use his body. Christopher had the strength of the late stage of the realm, 
but he knew he stood no chance in front of Sebastian. At this moment, his face was pale, his eyes were full of despair, and all his ambitions were wiped out except for his wish to survive. Father, his life is in your hands, Sebastian shouted. Then slowly, he turned around and started to chase Patriarch Long. Kill, let's join Sebastian and kill the enemy together. All the members of the Hughes family also completely exploded at this moment. All these days, the members of the Hughes family have been targeted and suppressed everywhere. And this moment was the real moment when they felt vindicated. Every member of the Hughes family felt that they had never been so happy before, and one by one desperately started to chase and kill those fleeing enemies. After a lot of fighting, the Hughes family won a complete victory. Patriarch Long, you old fellow, where are you going to escape? Sebastian stretched out his figure and chased after the Long family's men and horses. Sebastian, you little jerk, you must die. Thomas took the Long family's troops and fled desperately towards the Long mansion, roaring angrily. His head was suddenly in unbearable pain, and he screamed out in pain. He had been hit by Sebastian's heaven-destroying needle. Sebastian's movement was so fast that he caught up with Thomas Long in an instant. Old man, go to hell! Sebastian slashed out with a sword. The dazzling sword light cast like an antelope's horns and no trace could be found. The sword light cut along his neck evenly. The patriarch's head was immediately flushed with blood from the neck and fell on the ground. Sebastian, you killed my father. You deserve to die. Nora happened to turn around at that instant, and when she saw this scene, she screamed heart-piercingly. If our Hughes family would have been defeated today, you would have treated our Hughes family in the same way, Sebastian said indifferently. The long sword in Sebastian's hand slashed out again, instantly killing more than a dozen members of the Long family with one move. Flesh and blood flew across the sky. Sebastian, please forgive us. The people of the Long family, who had no courage to resist Sebastian, suddenly knelt down and prostrated themselves on the ground, trembling in fear. However, Sebastian did not show any mercy to them as he knew they were his enemies and would get back at him given a chance. He mercilessly attacked them all, and one after another. Bloody bodies were seen flying, because in his mind he knew the three major families would have done the same if the Hughes family had been defeated today, and the members of his family would have been slaughtered mercilessly. Therefore, Sebastian did not show mercy. Now that he has been able to achieve almost the impossible by killing Raymond Brooke, a realm of possibilities opened up in front of him. So what will Sebastian do now? Will he go and join the Red Lotus sect? or forge an independent path, honing his martial prowess by his father's side. Nora Long was also beheaded by Sebastian. Why? Why did things happen this way? Before Nora died, she finally felt deep regret. Originally, she had been Sebastian's fiance. Sebastian's rise today should have brought her boundless glory and pride. But now, all that was brought to her was death. No. Nora cried out in frustration before breathing her last. Then her head flew up with the dazzling sword light. Percy Lincoln, be ready to die. The elders of the Hughes family had caught up with Patriarch Lincoln and started fighting. He was only in the middle stage of the realm. But after a few tricks, he began to beg for mercy. However, nobody paid any heed to his pleas. The great elder pierced his heart with a sword and blood spattered all around. All three major families were destroyed. From now on there will only be one big family left in Blazing Star City, and that is the Hughes family. The crowd of onlookers in the distance let out exclamations. Patriarch Robert became disabled and useless for life, and Thomas Long and Percy Lincoln were killed. None of the heads of the three major families were spared. Within some time, there was a heap of dead bodies in front of the gate of Hughes Mansion, comprising the bodies of the people from the three major families, the City Lord's Mansion, and members of the Ruthless Ghosts mercenary group. Only the members of the Hughes family were left. Our Hughes family has won. All the members of the Hughes family raised their weapons high and shouted wildly in excitement. Sebastian, my dear son, you, you really surprised me today. Brian Hughes came over excitedly and was tremblingly supported by Sebastian. He was so overwhelmed by his emotions that he could not even speak. Sebastian, our Hughes family was able to survive this disaster, mainly because of you. The seven elders also gathered around, all of them very excited. The other members of the Hughes family also stared at Sebastian with awe and eager eyes. After this battle, Sebastian's status in the Hughes family reached a peak. At this time, 
Sebastian gave up the source essence and blood-corroding strike method, and the thick blood-colored fog that surrounded his body gradually diminished. As soon as that happened, Sebastian's head spun, and a wave of dizziness overwhelmed him, accompanied by a profound sensation of emptiness and physical weakness coursing through his body. He knew this was bound to happen, as he had exerted his current body too much. He needed time to recuperate, but he was happy that he was able to exterminate all the enemies and had been successful in killing Raymond. The long sword in Sebastian's hand fell to the ground, and he staggered a little. Sebastian, are you okay? His father was shocked and became concerned for him as he supported his son. I'm fine. I used a rare and restricted form of martial arts skill today, so experiencing a period of void and temporary weakness after that is a normal phenomenon. Don't worry, father. Sebastian assured him in an exhausted voice. Then he took out a few healing elixirs, stuffed them into his mouth, and swallowed them. He knew these elixirs would not be able to rejuvenate him for long, but he assured his father. That's good. Hearing this, his father felt a lot relieved. He had also realized that during the fight Sebastian had indeed used some kind of mysterious technique, which caused his strength to increase dramatically in a short period of time. My son, go back and rest for a while, Patriarch Hughes said. Yes, father. Sebastian nodded, ready to turn around and go back to Hughes' mansion. Suddenly, a mocking voice was heard. Oh, it's really wonderful. Boy, unexpectedly, you were able to practice such a rare kind of magic, and were even able to defeat and kill a master of the heavenly realm. It was a young man. He was wearing a golden robe, a jade crown on his head, and a brocade belt around his waist. He looked proud, and looked at Sebastian with disdain. Sebastian couldn't help but shrink his gaze, recognizing the other party's identity. It was Ralph Lindsay, Prime Minister Lindsay's son. He could also see from the end of the street, a large group of people, mostly armed soldiers coming slowly towards the gate of the Hughes mansion. The Hughes family of Blazing Star City acted recklessly, offended the superiors, and slaughtered the people of the City Lord's mansion. The people of the City Lord's mansion were under the jurisdiction of the Imperial family. The actions of the Hughes family have provoked and offended the authority and honor of the Imperial family, and you have been declared to be treasonous. Soldiers, listen to my order and destroy the Hughes family immediately! Sitting on the tall horse, Ralph Lindsay waved his hand and shouted indifferently. Behind him, all the soldiers shouted in unison, roaring to the sky. Teams of well-trained soldiers surrounded the Hughes family aggressively. These soldiers were all dressed in bright, shining armors with iron-blooded and steady eyes and each of them had a vicious, murderous intent in their hearts. Obviously, these soldiers who have actually been on the battlefield and experienced slaughter on the battlefield were by no means comparable to those from the three major families and the city lord's mansion. The army consisted of a diverse array of soldiers, including cavalry, crossbowmen, and infantry. Team after team of soldiers came surging like a tide. There were so many of them that they could not be counted. Boy, I can't think of it. Only royalty is worthy of the Poison Blade technique and Seventh Heaven Flower, which you misappropriated. You know that you belong to a small family. In comparison to the Prime Minister's son, you are as low as an ant, and yet you dared to snatch something that should have belonged to him, you really don't know how to respect or behave in front of royalty. Beside Ralph Lindsay, the emaciated old man stared at Sebastian with a condescending gaze, and lashed out in a vicious tone. By then, the Hughes mansion had been besieged to the brim. Sebastian, you dared to offend the Prime Minister's son, which is a crime you cannot live. Now everyone in the Hughes family put down your weapons. None of you must try to protect him. At this time, the City Lord of Blazing Star City also appeared and laughed triumphantly. Shortly before, he had led his troops to escape from the city. However, during their journey, they encountered Prime Minister Lindsay's son and his forces. Encouraged by them and the Royal Army, he joined them and returned to face the situation with renewed confidence. Prime Minister Lindsay's son has come, and the situation is already not looking great enough. Sebastian has simply been too bold. He had dared to offend the Prime Minister's son. This time, the Hughes family was really going to get it. There was a burst of exclamation among the crowd of onlookers. A series of eyes stared at Ralph Lindsay riding on the tall horse with endless awe. You know, Prime Minister Lindsay holds such a respected position in the royal family, and has above 10,000 people under him. 
fighting against Prime Minister Lindsay's son is equivalent to fighting against the Imperial family. No matter what, it is impossible for a mere Hughes family to have the strength to fight against the Imperial family. At this time, all the members of the Hughes family were pale and fell into despair again. The son of Prime Minister Lindsay had personally led troops to surround and threaten the Hughes family. The Hughes family would be completely over this time. People of the Hughes family, prepare to meet the enemy. Sebastian raised the long sword in his hand and said slowly. At this moment, Sebastian's expression was also a bit rough. Unexpectedly, this Ralph had actually chased him all the way to Blazing Star City. Moreover, so many troops have also been brought in by him. No matter who it is, it is not so easy to destroy our Hughes family. The long sword in Sebastian's hand pointed obliquely at Ralph as he uttered these words. Sebastian, you are now at the end of your strength. What strength do you have to resist? The skinny old man beside Ralph let out a cold snort. Ralph, if you dare to touch my Hughes family today, I, Sebastian, swear I will kill you. Sebastian locked eyes on Ralph with murderous intent, though he knew it would be impossible for him to fight anyone with his current physical condition. He was on the verge of a breakdown and needed to recuperate urgently to get his cultivation powers back. He was in a desperate situation, but he did not show his inner confusion and spoke out in a bold voice. Following his words, a surge of power erupted instantly from Sebastian's aura. He knew it was due to the elixirs he had consumed, but it was only for a very short time that they would provide vitality to his body. Was it going to be enough for him to survive the direct combat? Sebastian thought to himself before he proceeded towards his martial enemy. The people around him were excited. They had seen Sebastian achieve almost the impossible by killing the leader of the mercenary group. So everyone felt very charged and seemed to feel the urge to fight inspired by the violent atmosphere and was ready to cut down the throats of others. While some people who were not determined enough almost fell to their knees and wanted to ask Sebastian to surrender in front of the Prime Minister's son. In fact, this was the aura caused by Sebastian's eruption of his remaining soul power incited by the elixirs he had taken. The warhorse that Ralph was riding screamed in fright on the spot and retreated desperately, trying to stay away from Sebastian. Ralph was overwhelmed by Sebastian's aura and felt terrified. After a while, he finally regained his strength, and he couldn't help but growl from embarrassment. Immediately the weapons vibrated and the horses neighed. Another big battle was about to break out. Now that the Prime Minister's son, along with the royal troops, was there to seek revenge and kill him, can Sebastian rise against all odds and save the day? What choice will he make? Will his powers assist him? What path will he tread as the battle intensifies? When the big battle was about to begin, suddenly a loud voice was heard. Stop it, you all! Then a group of people came galloping from the other side of the street. In the lead were Marissa, Alchemist Finley, a young man in yellow, and an old man in green. Although the number of members of their team was small, each one was very powerful. Among them, there were four masters in the Sky Realm alone, including that old man in green, and that young man whom Sebastian had cured. Sebastian is my benefactor. Anyone who dares to touch him will be considered as my enemy. The young man in the yellow shirt took the lead and shouted loudly. Who is this person? Who had the authority to talk so daringly in front of even the Prime Minister's son present here? Many onlookers were secretly wondering in their hearts. Who is he? What is his background? Sebastian was also a little puzzled in his heart. Not long ago, at the Alchemist's workshop, Sebastian had helped to treat this young man in yellow. He instantly recognized him with a single glance. The Lord of Blazing Star City pays homage to His Royal Highness the Honorable Prince. Just when the people around were secretly guessing the identity of the yellow-shirted youth, the City Lord of the Blazing Star City was so frightened that he rushed to the front of the yellow-shirted youth and showed his respect. I have had the good fortune to meet His Royal Highness the Honorable Royal Prince earlier also. Even Ralph and the skinny old man beside him had to bite the bullet and salute with fists clasped. A general in silver armor came out and also bowed down in front of the young man in a yellow shirt. His Royal Highness, the Honorable Prince, please accept my greetings. Could it be that he is the son of the current emperor? Suddenly, all the people around were stunned and shocked to the extreme. Has the current prince in person come to our blazing star city? 
A few individuals present there were so overcome with fear that their legs grew weak, nearly causing them to collapse to the ground. Mark Benson, you are so brave that you dare to help the lord of a mere city to offend the benefactor of the prince, the prince said with a sneer. Respected prince, please spare me. I had no idea that Master Sebastian was the benefactor of your highness. If I knew, I would never dare to offend Master Sebastian. The city lord was so frightened that his face turned pale and he begged for forgiveness repeatedly. Please forgive me, your highness. Damn it. How can this be possible? Sebastian is actually the benefactor of the royal prince. At this time, Ralph Lindsay's expression was also very confused. Although he was the son of Prime Minister Lindsay, the young man in a yellow shirt in front of him was the current prince, and being the prince among the imperial family, his status was far greater than his. You are the commander of the northwest border. So why didn't you stay in the barracks and guard the frontier? You had actually instead brought the whole imperial army to the Blazing Star City. What a waste. If I tell my father about this matter, how do you think my father will deal with it? The prince looked at the general in silver armor and said calmly, Your Highness, my honorable prince, I am sorry. Please spare me for my mistake this time. The commander requested the prince. The commander had no enmity with the Hughes family. It was Ralph Lindsay who had sent people to the barracks, asking him to send troops to Blazing Star City. And as he was the son of Prime Minister Lindsay, so the commander immediately agreed as he did not want to displease the Prime Minister. Unexpectedly, now he met the prince who had a higher status. Commander, listen to this order. The prince suddenly took out a golden waist badge, held it up high, and shouted loudly. On that seal was engraved a huge dragon with its teeth and claws open, exuding the kind of majesty of an emperor. The commander quickly knelt down on one knee in front of the prince as the seal badge of the prince could freely mobilize troops in any military region of the imperial family. Take your men and horses and return to your barracks immediately. Make no mistake. As for your crime of leaving without authorization, I will settle accounts with you later. The prince commanded. As you command your majesty. The commander responded loudly and turned to face his troops. The commander waved his hand and ordered loudly. Withdraw! Immediately, the soldiers besieged around the Hughes mansion began to retreat in an orderly manner, like a tide. They were far away from Hughes's mansion in a short while. Forgive me, Master Sebastian, I'm going back. The commander greeted Sebastian hastily and left Blazing Star City with his men and horses. The Hughes family had turned the corner again. Sebastian actually got acquainted with the prince, and the prince claimed that he was his benefactor. This was simply amazing. With the support of the prince, it won't be difficult for the Hughes family to not rise up now. Today, the fate of the Hughes family has been full of twists and turns. It could be called bizarre twists and turns. The table has turned again in their favor. The crowd of onlookers in the distance let out exclamations of wonder. Master Sebastian, thanks to your help last time, you helped me get rid of the poison on my body. Otherwise, I would have been still lying on the bed, unable to move. The royal prince strode towards Sebastian and said gratefully, Marissa, Alchemist Finley, and the old man in a green robe followed closely beside the prince. Your majesty, my honorable prince, you're being polite, it's nothing. It's... Sebastian cupped his fists in return. Everyone in the Hughes family, greet the prince. Seeing the prince approaching, Patriarch Hughes immediately brought all the members of the Hughes family to kneel down and salute respectfully. The status of the prince was a very honorable one. In front of the prince, the Hughes family in Blazing Star City was nothing. Uncle Hughes, all this formal greeting is not necessary. Sebastian has been my savior. You can just call me Julian. The prince embraced Brian. The prince is very noble. Patriarch Hughes stood up with the members of the Hughes family, but nobody from the Hughes family dared to call the prince by his name, as this was a serious crime of dishonoring the royalty and the emperor. Master Sebastian, why don't you invite me and the prince into your mansion for a bit? Suddenly Marissa smiled lightly and said to Sebastian, Please come in. I would be honored by your gracious presence. Sebastian made a gesture of invitation and led the way ahead. After all, the prince had done the Hughes family a great favor and saved them. Sebastian felt really grateful towards the prince, and he was really good-natured, and the positive way he treated his father created a favorable impression on Sebastian. Before entering the gate of Hughes' mansion, Sebastian turned his head and took a deep look at Ralph, with an infinite killing intent in his eyes. Sebastian knew this enmity would go on, and he swore revenge on the Prime Minister's son. He secretly swore in his heart that he would definitely kill Ralph Lindsay. However, 
as his body was very weak. He decided to keep it for a later period of time, so he temporarily spared Ralph. At this moment, Ralph Lindsay was utterly disregarded, and not a single person bestowed any attention upon him. The skinny old man accompanying him asked in a low voice, Shall we leave? Yes, let's go. Ralph turned the horse's head, patted the horse, and left. The skinny old man led a group of subordinates and followed closely behind him. Master, it was really unexpected that Kid Sebastian actually knew the prince. It is a bit difficult for us to do anything against him for now. After leaving Hugh's mansion, the skinny old man said to Ralph, Yes, I heard that within this year, the emperor will officially confer him as the crown prince. There are several other princes fighting fiercely for the throne. So I don't believe that the prince will have that kind of energy and time to protect Sebastian all the time. I think that after the prince leaves Blazing Star City, after a while, he will completely forget about Sebastian. A child of a small family in a small city, it is impossible for the royal prince to really want to befriend him. So we will have to wait for another chance to deal with Sebastian and eradicate the Hughes family. I want everyone in the world to know that for anyone who dares to offend me, things would definitely end badly for them. Ralph Lindsay gritted his teeth and said viciously, You are right! The skinny old man nodded repeatedly. Will Ralph Lindsay strike back with renewed vengeance? Will the prince forsake Sebastian's favor so easily? When and how will Sebastian's masterful plan to settle the score with Ralph Lindsay be in action? Sebastian, the Royal Prince, Marissa, Alchemist Finley, and the green-robed old man, who had been accompanying the prince, were all sitting in the hall of the Hughes mansion. Outside the hall, more than a dozen attendants of the prince were guarding the hall. As for Brian Hughes, he along with the seven elders and the other members of the Hughes family had been able to wipe off the remaining members of the three major families from the Blazing Star City. Earlier, in the Great Battle, the three major families suffered heavy casualties. Almost all the heads of the three families, as well as the strong men of the clan, were killed. The rest of the survivors were weaklings, and Patriarch Hughes and the seven elders were more than enough to suppress them. Therefore, Sebastian was not required to participate and he stayed in the hall of the Hughes family, talking with the prince and Marissa Bradford. The city lord had also brought a group of people from the city lord's mansion to ask for forgiveness in front of the prince. Given a chance, the lord of the city would have escaped, but in front of the royal prince he did not dare, and had to wait with his people to be forgiven. He knew that if the prince gave an order, he would have absolutely nowhere to escape within the heavenly sky empire, and nobody would be able to help him. He knew that all three major families in Blazing Star City had been completely wiped out. Only the Hughes family was left. While in the hall, the prince asked Sebastian, Can you please tell me about the poison, or the void poison that had been administered to me? Honorable prince, do you want to track down the person who poisoned you? Sebastian smiled slightly. Yes. The prince nodded. Considering that the poison almost killed him, it was natural for him to desire to investigate and uncover the truth behind it. My dear prince, I can tell you two things about the void poison. First, to be able to refine this kind of poison, at least a fourth level alchemist is required. Second, this kind of poison is invisible, colorless, and tasteless, and is usually administered over a long period of time. By the time the poisoned person discovers it, it is too late, and there is nothing to be done. Therefore, it is obvious that the person who poisoned you must be someone close to you and who could easily access your daily food, Sebastian said slowly. I see. After listening to Sebastian's words, the prince's expression became grave and his eyes were full of anger, as if he had already thought of someone. Once I return, I must thoroughly investigate all the people around me and find out the person who dared to poison me, the prince said to the old man in the green robe beside him. Yes, definitely. We will look into the matter and find the culprit and punish him severely, the old man replied respectfully. Sebastian, according to what you said, the poisoning of the prince was very serious. Then how did you cure him so easily? Marissa asked suddenly. She was stunned by Sebastian's knowledge of medicines and healing powers. I'm different. There is no poison in the world that I don't have a cure for. Sebastian smiled lightly at her. His words exuded confidence. In his earlier life, Sebastian used to be an alchemy master and he had in-depth research and understanding of all kinds of medicine of the world, so no one in this world could compare with the vast knowledge that he retained from his past life. 
the poison of the void is extracted from the poisonous saliva of a rare kind of centipede found in the Heavenly Sky Empire. However, to Sebastian, it was simply child's play to which he did not pay much attention, or did not feel even worthy of mentioning. After hearing Sebastian's confident words, the people around couldn't help but be startled, and looked at Sebastian with surprised eyes. Sebastian, you cured the prince's illness but don't forget that you promised me that you would cure me within ten days. Marissa approached Sebastian and asked with a smile, the unique fragrance of the young woman flowing into Sebastian's nostrils. Miss Bradford, don't worry. I promise to help you heal and I will definitely do it. Did you get all the things in Panacea I asked you to gather? Sebastian nodded. Yes, I have all the things you mentioned. Here you go, I have all the necessary ingredients as stated required to make the Panacea that too, all in order. Marissa took out all the elixir she needed from a spatial ring in her hand. Although these elixirs are precious and rare, the Alchemist's Gallery Workshop specialized in the business of elixirs and had them all collected in ten days. Very good. Miss Bradford, you wait for me for half an hour, while I refine the antidote for you. Sebastian took the elixirs in his hand, and said, Then Sebastian left the hall, found a quiet room near the hall, and started doing his alchemy processes. About half an hour later, Sebastian returned to the hall. Here, Miss Bradford, after you take this panacea, your body will fully recover. Sebastian handed a light red-colored panacea to Marissa. Really? This panacea? Will it cure my illness? Marissa took the elixir, her body trembling slightly with excitement. A couple of years ago, a strange disease had suddenly appeared in her body which had been torturing her physically and mentally. Otherwise, she would never have thought of staying aloof in a remote place like Blazing Star City. Sure. Sebastian smiled lightly, understanding Marissa's excitement. Sebastian, thank you very much. Marissa smiled at Sebastian. At this moment she looked very charming. This is a fourth level panacea. Sebastian, did you refine this fourth grade panacea? Suddenly, Alchemist Finley fixed his gaze on the light red elixir in Marissa's hand and cried out in disbelief. Fourth level panacea. Marissa the prince and other people present in the hall were also shocked. All of them were shocked as Sebastian had taken the elixirs given by Marissa and left the hall for only half an hour. And then, he came back with his fourth grade panacea. That meant that this fourth level panacea was refined by him. Sebastian, that means that you are a fourth level alchemist? Alchemist Finley looked at Sebastian curiously and said, That's excellent. This fourth level panacea was indeed refined by me. Sebastian nodded. A collective gasp echoed throughout the hall. The fact that someone as young as 16 or 17 possessed the skill of a fourth level alchemist was truly difficult to fathom. Within the Heavenly Sky Empire, there were only three individuals who had reached the fourth level of alchemy, all of whom were over 60 years old. And now, a fourth rank alchemist suddenly appeared, who was even less than 20 years of age, which was really shocking. Okay, stop talking now. You should take the panacea first. I promise that your disease will be cured, and now it will be done, Sebastian said to Marissa. Good. Without hesitation, Marissa put the light red-colored panacea into her mouth. As soon as she put it inside her mouth, a wave of medicinal power spread throughout her body, and after a while, she said gratefully, My body is fine. Sebastian, thank you very much. A look of ecstasy suddenly appeared on Marissa's beautiful face. She felt that in the past two years, her body had never been so relaxed as if some invisible shackles had been shattered. A sudden powerful spiritual force surged out from her body. I broke through to the late stage. Feeling the surging spiritual power in her body, Marissa was extremely pleasantly surprised. Sebastian, thank you very much. Marissa's eyes filled with boundless gratitude as she gazed at Sebastian with admiration. The mysterious ailment that had plagued her for the past two years had finally been cured and her cultivation level had even ascended to a new advanced level. And, Sebastian was the catalyst behind this remarkable transformation. You are welcome. Upon examination, it became evident that an internal injury within your body was the root cause of your affliction. It appears that you were harmed by an individual who practiced an evil form of martial art. Consequently, a poisonous influence infiltrated your meridians, leading to an imbalance within your body's energy pathways, Sebastian said. I know who it was. Just wait. I will seek revenge on her and teach her a lesson that she won't ever forget. Marissa gritted her teeth.
As a miraculous cure was achieved for both Marissa and the prince, they both owe their lives to Sebastian. Both of them wanted to show their gratitude towards him by rewarding him. How will they reward him and express their gratitude? As Sebastian's identity as a fourth-level alchemist is revealed throughout the vast expanse of the Heavenly Sky Empire, how is this going to impact him and his clan in the long run? Sebastian, I would like to invite you to participate in the alchemy competition to be held in the Imperial City of the Empire in a month's time. At this time, the Royal Prince suddenly looked at Sebastian and said, Really? Sebastian was taken aback. Sebastian, let me tell you the truth. One month later, in the Royal City of the Empire, an alchemy competition will be held. This alchemy contest is organized by our royal family. The purpose is to choose a worthy alchemist to help cure my grandmother's illness. The other princes of the imperial family and messengers are already recruiting alchemists for the competition from everywhere. In fact, this is a competition among the members of the royal families. He continued, The person who recruits the most worthy alchemist will win the championship. The alchemist who would be able to cure my grandmother's illness will certainly be able to gain the favor of our royal family, and the person recruiting him would have a better chance of being canonized as the crown prince and officially becoming the heir to the throne. Sebastian, you must help me by doing this favor. The prince looked at Sebastian expectantly. I see. Sebastian was stunned. However, Sebastian was not very interested in getting involved in the internal struggles of the imperial family. Therefore, he was silent for a while. Sebastian, please promise to help me secure the crown. If I can win the throne in the future, then I will definitely support the Hughes family to become the largest family in the empire. I will never go back on my words, the prince said. Sebastian, you can help the prince with this. He really is a worthy contender for the crown. Marissa also spoke up for the prince. Okay, well, then I'm ready. Sebastian finally nodded. Sebastian was aware that there would come a time when he would need to depart from the Heavenly Sky Empire. Before that day arrived, he deemed it crucial to forge alliances with powerful individuals who could safeguard and fortify the Hughes family. That's great. Here are some 50,000 spirit crystals. Accept it as my token of gratitude for curing me. Please accept it. The prince couldn't help but feel overjoyed at the prospect of taking Sebastian to the alchemy competition, took out an interspatial ring, and handed it to Sebastian. Sebastian, you healed my body and repaired my martial veins. Take these 50,000 spirit crystals and accept them as my reward for you. Also, I will send someone to deliver the sales commission for the heavenly pill refined by you to your family on a regular basis. Marissa also took out a spatial ring and handed it to Sebastian. Okay. Sebastian didn't refuse, and took the spirit stones both from the prince and Marissa. He was happy to get the spatial rings. After all, the Hughes family would definitely require a lot of resources. Okay, Sebastian. Now I will take your leave and return back to the Imperial City. I will wait for you in the Imperial City to join me after a month for the competition. At that time you can directly come to the Royal Mansion and ask for me." The Prince stood up. Sebastian nodded his head in agreement. The Royal Prince left the Hughes Mansion with his troops. Sebastian, as my illness is cured, I am also about to leave Blazing Star City. However, in the future, I am sure we will definitely meet again, Marissa said to Sebastian. Sebastian nodded. Thereafter. Marissa also left the Hughes mansion, along with alchemist Braylon Finley. Soon after, Patriarch Hughes and the Seven Elders came back with the members of the Hughes family. The patriarchs of the three major families in Blazing Sky City had met their permanent demise, leaving their families utterly extinguished. Consequently, all the wealth and assets of these families now belonged to the Hughes family. As a result, the Hughes family stood alone as the sole prominent household in Blazing Star City. Father. There are 100,000 spirit crystals here. You can use them as funds for the development of the Hughes family. Sebastian handed his father Brian the two spatial rings given by the prince and Marissa just now. Patriarch Hughes and the seven elders were too shocked to speak. Patriarch Hughes and the seven elders were left astounded, unable to find words to express their astonishment. Despite thoroughly looting the residences of the three major families after the battle, their own efforts failed to amass the tremendous quantity of spirit crystals that Sebastian presented to them at that very moment. Our Hughes family has become rich overnight.
Patriarch Brian and the seven elders were extremely excited. Next, Sebastian returned to his room in the Hughes mansion. As Sebastian had used the Source Essence and Blood Collision method while fighting the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts mercenary group, his body felt quite exhausted and tired. So Sebastian needed to retreat for a period of time to allow his body to recover properly. Without recuperating properly, he would not be able to cultivate his powers further. So he decided to give his body the required amount of rest. Master, you were incredibly brave today. You're the hero who saved the Hughes family, Sarah exclaimed, unable to contain her happiness. She hurriedly approached Sebastian, her eyes sparkling with admiration and joy. Oh so, you did not think much of me or my bravery before today, you mean to say? Sebastian teased her. Sebastian had always regarded Sarah as his younger sister and often joked with her and teased her. No, it's not like that. I was just amazed at the way you fought today, Sarah replied. It seemed like you even surpassed yourself. Sebastian smiled warmly at Sarah and replied, Thank you, Sarah. I'm glad we were able to overcome the challenges today. But for now, Sarah, I will give you a list of herbs and a batch of elixirs that you will have to get for me from the Alchemist Pavilion Workshop. And then I will retreat and take a rest for a few days. Ensure that no one disturbs me during my rest, Sebastian said to Sarah. Sebastian wrote out a list and handed it to her. After Sarah got the medicine list, she set off to the Alchemist Pavilion workshop to buy the elixir. Sebastian entered his room and began to prepare for his retreat. This time, as I used the method of disintegrating the source essence and blood collision, the consumption of energy has been really quite high. Sebastian took out a few healing elixirs and swallowed them. Then he started practicing the Nine Meridian Body Cultivation Method for healing. The next day, Sebastian found that his body had completely recovered and was back to its peak condition. By that time, Sarah had purchased a large batch of elixir, which filled several spatial rings, and got them for him. So in the room, Sebastian started to practice alchemy again. Three days later, Sebastian finished his alchemy practices and left his room. Master, you're finally out! When Sarah saw Sebastian walk out of the room, she greeted him happily. Sarah, you swallow this body-strengthening pill. Sebastian took out a panacea and handed it over to her. This elixir is for me? She was taken aback. How can I have it? She hesitated. Just obey what I'm telling you, Sebastian said. Oh well. Sarah hesitated for a while but then obeyed his order and swallowed the elixir in one gulp. As soon as she took it, a strange sound emanated from her body. A clear roaring sound came from inside her body. Sebastian knew that the strengthening pill had taken effect on her. The function of the strengthening pill was to carry out a comprehensive transformation of the body, making people's bodies more suitable for practicing martial arts. Sarah, take this bottle of body strengthening pill. You have to take one every time you practice martial arts. Then, I will teach you a skill called the Tiger's Claw. You have to practice hard every morning and evening, and when the eight meridians in your body emerge, you will be considered to have officially embarked on the road of cultivation. Sebastian took out another bottle of panacea and handed it to her. Master, are you going to teach me how to practice? Sarah stared at Sebastian with her beautiful eyes, feeling a little overwhelmed. Why? What happened? Don't you want to learn how to practice? Sebastian teased. Master, thank you. I am really willing to practice. I will be forever grateful to you and don't know how I would ever be able to repay you. Sarah was so excited and moved that tears streamed down her face. She was about to kneel down to Sebastian. Once she embarked on the road of cultivation, it meant that her status would undergo a total transformation. She would no longer remain a lowly and humble maid of the Hughes household. Sebastian wanted to really help this simple girl with a pure heart. Why does Sebastian want to reshape Sarah's destiny? What path will he tread next in his relentless pursuit of transformative change? What further altruistic motives does he plan to carry out? Sarah, why are you crying? Don't you know that I don't like to see you crying? Sebastian stuffed the bottle of elixir into Sarah's hands, held her shoulders, and prevented her from kneeling down. Sarah forced her tears back. I won't cry anymore. That's good. Sebastian smiled, stretched out his hand and patted Sarah on her head. Okay, Sarah, from now on, you need to concentrate on cultivation, and you don't have to worry about other things, Sebastian said. Yes, master, don't worry, I won't let you down, 
I promise. Sarah nodded heavily. Then Sebastian left the Hughes mansion and started walking towards the Blazing Star Academy. With just two days remaining before his departure from Blazing Star City to join the Red Lotus sect, Sebastian became acutely aware that his future endeavors would largely take place outside the city. The prospect of returning to Blazing Star City seemed increasingly slim. Thus he resolved to meet his best friend Michael, before embarking on his journey to the sect. Filled with a mix of anticipation and nostalgia, Sebastian sought out Michael, eager to spend some quality time before leaving. In his previous life, Sebastian had dedicated thousands of years to his practice, ultimately ascending to the esteemed position of Emperor of Heaven. Yet this exalted status brought with it an overwhelming sense of loneliness and desolation. Reflecting on his past life, Sebastian recalled with wistfulness how many of his beloved relatives, partners, mentors, and friends had vanished, leaving him in solitude. The recollection of such a solitary existence caused his heart to ache with sorrow. Determined not to repeat the same fate in this lifetime, Sebastian made a solemn vow to treasure and cherish every person he cared about. Look, Sebastian is here. As he walked through the streets of Blazing Star City, all the passers-by looked at Sebastian with awe. Sebastian had defeated Justin with one move in the Four Clan Heavenly Successor competition, and the story of how he had defeated the leader of the Ruthless Ghosts mercenary group spread throughout the Blazing Star City. On the street, everyone looked at Sebastian as if he was a hero. Hello, Sebastian. Hello, Sebastian. One after another, people respectfully saluted Sebastian. Sebastian walked with his hands behind his back and nodded slightly to acknowledge their greetings. He knew that the world of warriors worked like this. The strong were respected while the weak were trampled upon or ignored. As Sebastian had once ascended to the position of the Emperor of Heaven, wherever he went, he had been respected and honored by countless patriarchs of great clans and heads of mighty sects who bowed in front of him to show their respect. Sebastian has long been familiar with this kind of respect and adulation, and was used to it. As Sebastian walked into the Blazing Star Academy, he saw all the students taking part in a physical training exercise. The Academy was an eminent school, and students from all over the Empire came to study here irrespective of their backgrounds. But it was good for students who had just started off. As the students saw him enter, they gasped and cried out in excitement. See, there is Sebastian! His presence caused a sensation amongst the students when he entered the Blazing Star Academy. One after another, students came from all directions to get a glimpse of Sebastian. There were so many of them that they almost blocked all the roads in the Academy. In the past, Sebastian had been known as a loser in the Blazing Star Academy. But now, things had changed, and all the students looked up at Sebastian with awe, admiration, envy, and longing. After a while, Sebastian found Michael and he was stunned to see him surrounded by a number of fellow students. Hey Michael, what are you doing? Sebastian called out. Sebastian, all these students want to become my friends though. I don't want to befriend any of them. I tried to convince them to leave me alone, but they are all adamant about becoming my friends. Some of them even threaten to commit suicide if I do not accept them as my friends. I'm at a loss as to what to do. Actually, I realize now that they all want your friendship. But as you are hard to get by... They want to get to you through me. Michael smiled at him and replied with a mischievous twinkle in his eyes. All right, you can make friends on behalf of me. Sebastian shook his head and smiled. However, Michael, you have to remember that as a martial artist, one's own strength is fundamental. In the future, you need to work harder to cultivate and strive to make yourself stronger. Sebastian pulled Michael aside, took out a spatial ring and a few jades and lists of exercises, and gave them to him. Michael, you can use these spirit stones, panacea, and martial arts techniques. Also, if you lack cultivation resources in the future, you can go directly to Hugh's mansion to get them. I will inform my father before leaving. I hope that when I return to Blazing Star City next time you can surprise me. Sebastian said. Sebastian, you are so kind to me. I really don't know how to repay you. Michael burst into tears of gratitude. That's enough. Don't cry so much. You are worse than a baby. Sebastian slapped Michael on his back in a friendly manner to stop him from crying. Sebastian, do you mean that you are leaving Blazing Star City? Michael asked, still sobbing. He continued while sobbing. That's right. Blazing Star City is too small. Sebastian, you are a real dragon. A small place like this cannot trap a real talent like you. Michael, 
Can't you see? You also are very talented. Sebastian laughed. Sebastian did not say anything further to Michael, but repeatedly reminded him to practice hard. Then, Sebastian left the Blazing Star Academy. He was reminded of Lillianne at the Academy, but he knew for sure that he would meet her again someday in the future. Back at the Hughes Mansion, Brian Hughes and the Seven Elders were all in the meeting hall. In the past few days, the Hughes family had changed a lot. Patriarch Hughes and the Seven Elders were discussing how to deal with various affairs in the clan. Sebastian told Brian about Sarah and Michael. Henceforth, Sarah shall no longer serve as a mere maidservant. She shall be recognized as a beloved daughter of the Hughes household. As for Michael, given his friendship with you, he is considered a dear friend of our family as well. I assure you I will personally ensure his well-being and care in the days to come. Brian assured his son. Sebastian, don't worry. We will not neglect what you have told us. The seven elders of the Hughes family also said with a smile. In fact, Sebastian had become the central figure of the entire Hughes family overnight. The current rise in status and fortune of the Hughes family was all caused by Sebastian. Father, there are hundreds of bottles of elixirs here. There are various types of elixirs for increasing aura, for breakthroughs in cultivation, and for healing. I have written the purpose of each bottle of elixirs in detail on the body of the bottle. Father, keep them safely away as a resource for the development of our Hughes family in the future. Sebastian took out hundreds of bottles of spirit pills and put them in front of his father. All of this was the result of Sebastian's three days of continuous alchemic activities. Here are some more cultivation technique details including cultivation details and martial skills. You should keep them safe. These exercises and martial arts techniques can be practiced by the upper grade martial art cultivators of the Hughes family. Select some talented young juniors and let them practice. Sebastian took out 10 jade slips of exercises and handed them to Brian Hughes. As the Emperor of Heaven, Sebastian had collected a lot of knowledge about cultivation and martial arts techniques. Okay, I see. Brian Hughes didn't ask anything and carefully put away the elixir and jade slips containing details of the exercises. Over time, the glory his son had brought for him and the full clan had been beyond even his imagination. He knew that now, his son was already so great that he couldn't comprehend his talent. So he simply didn't question his actions but followed his advice. Also, in Blazing Star City, don't forgive or let go of any of the big and small forces that once took sides with the Robert family. I have ten bottles of Heavenly Poison Pill here. All the big and small forces and high-level figures who had ever sided with the Robert family must swallow these poisonous pills. He continued. From now on, I pledge to return to our Hughes family annually to obtain the antidote and I swear to be loyal to our Hughes family forever. If there is any high-level leader of any force who refuses to swallow the poison pill, he should be killed directly. Sebastian took out ten bottles of poison pills and handed them to him. Brian and the seven elders of the Hughes family looked at the ten bottles of poison pills and were so shocked by Sebastian's methods that they were speechless as they knew that most of the big and small forces of Blazing Star City had joined the Robert family after Justin awakened the heavenly spirit body, and the Robert family had grown stronger. Sebastian's move was to wipe out all the big and small forces in Blazing Star City and make the Hughes family the strongest family in Blazing Star City. He just did not want to take a chance and let the enemies grow stronger. He wanted to nip them in the bud. Okay, Sebastian, I understand. Brian took the bottles of poison pills and nodded emphatically. He was also an ambitious person and agreed with Sebastian's decision. By the way, Sebastian, I forgot to tell you something. We found a few young people in the prison of the Robert family. They said they were your friends and had come to Blazing Star City to meet you and had encountered Christopher Robert while seeking directions, which ultimately led to their imprisonment. Do you want to meet them? He asked. My friends? Sebastian was a bit taken aback. Who could they be? Sebastian thought for a while, and several figures appeared in his mind, but he could not decide upon their identities. All right, bring them to meet me. Bring them. Sebastian nodded. Who were these enigmatic friends seeking an audience with Sebastian? Intrigue fills the air as anticipation builds. Will Sebastian's encounter with them bring joy or trouble for him? Soon, several young men and women were brought in front of Sebastian. They were Amanda Klaus, Lauren Carlsberg, and their friends from the Noble Warrior sect. 
Sebastian, we meet again. When Lauren saw Sebastian, she couldn't help but feel overjoyed. Sebastian, it seems that you are a famous person in Blazing Star City. It's really hard to meet you. Amanda and the others also greeted Sebastian. After being rescued by the Hughes family members, they were brought to the Hughes mansion. However, Sebastian had been in seclusion for the past few days, preventing them from meeting him until this moment. You all came to the Blazing Star City specifically to meet me? Sebastian asked with a smile. Amanda and the others all smiled as they nodded in agreement. They had indeed come to the city looking for Sebastian. But, unexpectedly, they had been arrested and locked in the Robert family's prison as they had encountered Christopher Robert. The whole ordeal proved to be quite embarrassing, leaving them feeling extremely uneasy. Now that the Robert family has been exterminated and that man is dead, you need not worry anymore. Sebastian held no strong feelings of hatred towards the disciples of the noble warrior sect, nor did he particularly like them. However, realizing that they had come specifically to find him, Sebastian chose to handle their presence with patience and be nice to them. It is good that the old villain Christopher from the Robert family is dead, otherwise sooner or later I would have settled the score with him. Amanda gritted her teeth and said, then she suddenly looked at Sebastian and asked, Sebastian, are you in the early stage of the realm? As Sebastian nodded in agreement, Amanda and the others were all shocked. Last time, when they met Sebastian in the Heavenly Beast Forest, Sebastian was only at the sixth level of body training, and now within a few days, he had been able to make such an advanced breakthrough. Sebastian, I heard that you have been recruited by Madame Louisa Emerson of the Red Lotus Sect and became a disciple of the Red Lotus Sect. In the future, there will be many more opportunities for us to meet, Lauren retorted happily. During the past few days, Lauren, Amanda, and the others stayed in the Hughes mansion, and they had heard all about Sebastian's achievements. Sebastian, when I met you for the first time, I knew that you were definitely not an ordinary person, she said confidently. Sebastian spent time with the noble warrior sect disciples for most of the day until they bid farewell to him. He presented each of them with a fourth-level elixir as a parting gift. Amanda, Lauren, and the others were shocked to get the fourth-level elixir presented by Sebastian, as even most elders from their noble warrior sect did not have such elixirs. But Sebastian had handed all five of them fourth-level spirit pills just as a gift. After the five disciples of the noble warrior sect left, Sebastian said to himself, Now it's time for me to leave Blazing Star City and report to the Red Lotus faction. Sebastian had given his word to Madame Louisa Emerson that he would report to the Red Lotus Faction headquarters in ten days. The headquarters of the Red Lotus sect was in the Heavenly Aura Mountains. From Blazing Star City to Heavenly Aura Mountain Range, it would take quite a few days on the road. Therefore, Sebastian knew that he should set off. Father, I should leave now, Sebastian informed his father. All right, my son, please take care of yourself. Emotions overwhelmed Brian as he reflected on the years he had single-handedly raised his son after the untimely demise of his wife when Sebastian was just a young child. Now, faced with the reality of his son embarking on a long journey away from him, Brian couldn't help but feel a deep reluctance to let him go. Sebastian had always been kept close, constantly within Brian's sight, making the prospect of his departure all the more difficult to accept. Father, don't worry. I will take care of myself. Sebastian nodded solemnly. Prior to departing from Blazing Star City, Sebastian revisited the alchemist's workshop once more. This time, he made a significant purchase of a large quantity of elixirs. Unfortunately, Marissa and the alchemist Finley had already departed from the city after Marissa's successful recovery. However, before their departure, Marissa had made a promise and ensured that all members of the Hughes family would be entitled to a discount on their purchases, and they would even have the option to pay on credit. After finishing all his work, Sebastian rode his horse alone and started to gallop towards the Heavenly Aura mountain range. Sebastian finally reached the Heavenly Aura mountain range after traveling for a couple of days. It was the place where the headquarters of the Red Lotus faction was located. As Sebastian looked ahead, his gaze fell upon a vast expanse of majestic mountains enveloped in an eternal shroud of dense fog. The undulating peaks stood tall, adorned with ancient trees scattered throughout. Horizontal boulders added to the picturesque scene, while the air was permeated with the enchanting fragrance of elixirs. 
The skies were graced by the graceful flight of spirit birds, including cranes, while auspicious beasts roamed the mountainside. The entire sight evoked a sense of purity and sanctity, as if he had stumbled upon a sacred realm beyond the realms of the ordinary world. This is indeed a good place for housing a sect. The Red Lotus sect is one of the four major sects of the Heavenly Sky Empire, and they have chosen a nice place for their headquarters. Sebastian looked at the Heavenly Aura mountain range in front of him, and nodded involuntarily. From Sebastian's eyes, he could tell at a glance that there was a sacred spiritual energy line under the headquarters of the Red Lotus faction. That's why the aura of this mountain range is so rich and suitable for cultivation. If I can utilize this sacred line, it would definitely increase my strength. It's just that the Red Lotus faction hasn't provoked me yet, so I won't do anything that would damage or affect their foundations. Sebastian smiled. As Sebastian ventured deeper into the Heavenly Aura mountain range, he arrived at a magnificent natural mountain gate that commanded a sense of awe. Standing before the gate, he noticed a prominent stone monument, reaching a height of ten feet. Ancient characters were intricately engraved upon it, depicting the three figures. Simultaneously, a group of disciples from the Red Lotus sect stood guard near the mountain gate, engaged in casual conversation. Elder Bernard Templeton told us that if we meet a kid named Sebastian, we should stop him and not allow him to enter through the Red Lotus sect's mountain gate. However, despite the passing days, Sebastian had not yet arrived. Some among the disciples even expressed relief, suggesting that it might be best if he didn't come at all. Rumor had it that Elder Emerson himself had personally recruited Sebastian, guaranteeing him a position as a core disciple upon joining the Red Lotus sect. Furthermore, it was said that within three months, during the opening of the Sky Shadow World, Sebastian would be granted one of the five coveted spots. Another disciple joined in. Now, the entire Red Lotus faction is discussing this matter. Core disciples, in particular, were filled with righteous indignation, feeling that Sebastian was getting an undue advantage. Even some elders objected to him receiving a place without undergoing any eligibility tests. Of course, no one would be convinced as our Red Lotus sect has more than 10,000 disciples and the number of places in the Sky Shadow world is only five. With a sect boasting over 10,000 disciples, and the limited availability of only five spots in the Sky Shadow world, it seemed highly improbable that a newly joined boy who hadn't even crossed the threshold of the mountain gate could secure one of those coveted positions. The sheer discrepancy in opportunity and experience fueled skepticism and further intensified the debates and objections within the sect. At the gate of the mountain, more than a dozen disciples guarding the gate were talking about it. None of the disciples of the Red Lotus sect were ready to give away a precious spot to Sebastian, whom they had not even seen till then. Look, there's a stranger approaching the mountain gate from a distance, one of the disciples exclaimed, drawing the attention of the others. Sebastian walked to the gate of the Red Lotus sect and took out the silver token given by Madame Emerson. I am here to join the faction, Sebastian said. May I have your name? One of the disciples asked. Sebastian, Sebastian replied while frowning slightly. Logically, these disciples responsible for guarding the mountain gate should recognize Elder Louisa Emerson's token. He had already shown them her token, yet they were still interrogating him. He could feel that something was wrong. Sebastian is here. The dozen or so disciples guarding the gate couldn't help but look at each other. Coincidentally, as they were discussing Sebastian and his unexpected privileges, he suddenly appeared before them. Turn back. You cannot enter this mountain gate, one of the disciples said in a threatening tone. An elder named Elder Templeton from the Red Lotus sect had secretly instructed the disciples guarding the mountain gate not to let Sebastian enter the mountain gate. What drives his vehement opposition to Sebastian's entry into the revered Red Lotus faction? What will happen now that Sebastian must confront formidable disciples in his quest for acceptance? Will he overcome the trials and secure his place in the elusive Shadow Sky world, defying all odds? Why? Can't you see clearly that this is Madame Emerson's token? It was Madame Louisa Emerson who asked me to report here. Do you dare to disobey Elder Louisa Emerson? Sebastian sneered. Boy, don't try to question us. You can't enter through this mountain gate. Another disciple said in a scornful tone, What if I disobey and go in? Sebastian's face darkened. He could tell that the dozen or so disciples guarding the gate 
were clearly trying to make things difficult for him. He had traveled for ten days, through a rugged and difficult way with little to eat, and now the disciples guarding the gate were refusing to let him in. Anger rose in Sebastian's heart. Boy, this is the Red Lotus sect. It's not a place where you can do as you wish. It is a serious crime to break into the mountain gate without permission. Seeing that Sebastian was adamant, the dozen or so disciples keeping guard over the gate were furious. Are you trying to scare me? I came here with the token of the Honorable Elder Louisa Emerson. So naturally, I have the right to enter this mountain gate. Now don't dare to stop me. Don't blame me for being rude. If anyone tries to stop me from entering. Sebastian laughed arrogantly and started walking through the mountain gate. You have to fight us before you can even dream of entering through this gate. The disciples were furious and rushed towards Sebastian. They felt enraged that a kid who hadn't even set foot in the Red Lotus sect showed such disregard towards them right at the mountain gate. With one palm, Sebastian sent all the dozen or so gatekeepers flying, and they all stumbled to the other side. As a result, they were unable to get up for a long time. Without looking back, Sebastian strode towards the mountain gate and walked in. These dozen or so disciples guarding the gate were all at the level of the body refining realm, so how could they stop Sebastian? Send the signal flare to indicate that someone is forcibly breaking into the mountain gate. Hurry up and inform Teacher Bernard of this matter. This Sebastian. The moment he set foot, he dared to hurt us and forced his way through the mountain gate. Let's see how the sect punishes him. More than a dozen gatekeeper disciples struggled to get up and sent out signal flares one after another. Several red flares shot up into the sky and exploded high in the sky. Sebastian made great strides and walked into the headquarters of the Red Lotus sect. Along the way, he had to cross a large number of pavilions and buildings dotted in the mountains and tall palaces, which were magnificent. There was also a lot of greenery in the form of trees and vines along with springs and waterfalls. However, the most precious thing about that place was that the spiritual energy was at least ten times stronger than that of the outside world. I have to say that the headquarters of the Red Lotus sect is indeed a good place to practice. But, there is a five elements divine mountain formation here. There are a total of five main peaks, occupying five directions, echoing each other from a distance, and connecting with each other. It's a pity that among them, only the two main peaks have an abundant amount of spiritual energy left. The remaining three main peaks have lost their spirituality and buried their roots. Otherwise, only the sacred energy of the Five Elements Divine Mountain Formation would have helped to increase the overall strength of the Red Lotus Sect. Sebastian walked into the headquarters of the Red Lotus Sect, and soon he could clearly see the terrain there. From the knowledge retained from his past life as the Heavenly Emperor, he knew about all kinds of places as he had traveled extensively. The headquarters of the Red Lotus Sect has a sacred spiritual line under the ground, and the headquarters is situated on the Five Elements Divine Mountain Formation. It seems that the founder of the Red Lotus Sect must have been a very wise and knowledgeable master. It's a pity that the current faction is not as spiritually enlightened as the ancient ones. Sebastian thought to himself as he surveyed the area ahead of him. Hey boy, how dare you trespass the mountain gate? You dare to take a leisurely walk here. Come on, bring him down. Just as Sebastian was observing the topography of the headquarters, a large group of disciples shouted and surrounded Sebastian aggressively. In the blink of an eye, dozens of disciples surrounded Sebastian, and most of them were in the body refining realm. It was this kid who committed crimes like wounding the disciples guarding the mountain gate and trespassing the mountain gate. One of the disciples with blood on the corner of his mouth pointed at Sebastian, and he looked at Sebastian very angrily. He was one of the disciples who had been keeping guard at the gate and was injured by Sebastian. I told them that I am here with Elder Louisa Emerson's token, and they should not mess with me. I warned them beforehand. Sebastian smiled coldly. Boy, this is the Red Lotus faction, and not a place where you can behave in such an atrocious manner. Now, kneel down obediently. We will tie your hands up, and then take you to the discipline hall for your punishment. Listen to us, and don't force us to be rude. A disciple in fluttering white clothes, slender and handsome, stepped forward, pointed at Sebastian, and shouted. Before he could even finish his sentence, a slap struck his face like lightning and sent his body flying in the air, causing him to fall dozens of meters away. I said, don't mess with me. Sebastian spoke in a dangerous manner. 
The white-clothed disciple whose face had swelled up covered his face and screamed in pain. He was at the ninth level of body training, and he did not expect to be defeated by a single move of this kid. The other disciples were also taken aback. Obviously, they never expected that Sebastian's combat power would be so powerful. Boy, stop being aggressive. I will teach you a lesson. A man in a purple robe came out of the crowd, pointed at Sebastian, and said, Sebastian looked at the man and realized that he was at an elementary level of the realm. A palm exuding terrifying power exploded into the air and slapped the man in purple directly on the face. He tried to escape desperately, but was helpless and didn't even have time to react. As the body of the man was thrown into the air and landed tens of meters away, he started to scream miserably and was unable to get up. The expressions of the surrounding disciples all changed drastically. Sebastian's power of fighting was beyond their expectations. Why are all the old fellows of the Red Lotus sect hiding in the dark to observe me? Why did they refuse to come out? It seems like they wanted to see how I would handle the situation in front of me. Okay, now I'll go all the way in. Let's see how long those high-level figures of the Red Lotus sect can endure. Sebastian smiled coldly. Sebastian, with his perception of soul power, had been able to discern that many masters were hiding in the dark and observing him. He was sure. Those masters were the high-level figures of the Red Lotus sect. He felt weird that until then, none of the higher authoritarian figures had come out to meet him. Because he was sure by then, they had been alerted about him having forced his way through the mountain gate. You lunatic! What do you think of our Red Lotus sect? You can hit whoever you like just because they don't listen to you? I will show you. Just wait for me! A stout young man with a ferocious expression pointed at Sebastian and warned from a distance. He had the strength of the middle level. Before he could finish speaking, Sebastian appeared like a ghost in front of him. You! The stout young man stuttered as he was overshadowed by him and he got punched. The young man couldn't dodge in time and was thrown far away and fell more than a hundred meters away. Sebastian looked very arrogant and domineering. The stout young man screamed in pain. The scene was suddenly extremely quiet. All the disciples around stared at Sebastian as if they were seeing a monster. All these disciples had received a secret order from an elder to deal with Sebastian. However, they had never imagined that Sebastian's combat power would be so terrifying. Whether it's the ninth level of body refining, the early stage of the realm, or the middle stage of the realm, they had all been defeated by Sebastian. He had agreed to join the sect only because he was promised a place in the precious Shadow Sky world. Otherwise, he would not have been interested in joining the Red Lotus faction for cultivation purposes. So now he felt very impatient and wanted to go inside and meet Louisa Emerson. Come on, none of you can escape. Come, whoever wants to get a good beating, Sebastian suddenly sneered. Sebastian dared the disciples to come and fight him. No, this kid is crazy, let's fight together. I can't believe it. Otherwise, how could he defeat so many of us? He looks normal and does not have three heads and six arms, but how could he beat so many of us? A disciple yelled. Will Sebastian be able to fight these disciples single-handedly? Why did the senior teachers and elders not interfere, refusing to greet Sebastian? Where is Elder Louisa Emerson, the one who handpicked him for the Red Lotus sect? 